Hi, guys. Welcome back. I'm excited to be here with you today again and looking forward to the next series that we're going to start with. We're going to, for the next three weeks, we're going to talk about the gifts of God's grace. God's grace is so big, and sometimes it's a very, very difficult thing to talk about. Because what exactly is God's grace? What does it mean? Does it mean His love, His abundance, His mercy? I want to, I want to today just talk about the first gift that um, God showed me that I just want to share with you guys. Um, we're going to talk today about the grace, uh, the gift of salvation. God's grace that He gave us salvation. It's a very important and it's very dear to my heart. And it's also the most important decision I believe every human being, doesn't matter how old you are, have to make. And you can sometimes make it two or three or four or five or ten times. But we have to make that decision to accept that gift. But before we start today, let's just quickly pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity again to just delve into your word, to, to walk where you walk, to, to just get a feeling of what happened while you were on earth. And thank you, Lord, that you came to earth with one main purpose, with one reason. And that was because you loved us, you gave your life for us, for our sin, so that we can have everlasting life. Thank you very much for that opportunity. I pray this through all the grace that you gave us. Amen. So Jesus came to earth a couple of years ago, about 2,000 to uh, oh, just over 2,000 years ago, and he walked on earth. And he was, he was obedient to God because God said to him, you have to become man. You have to become a pure man. You have to walk, work, get hurt, get angry. But then you're going to die for us. You're going to die for my people. And Jesus said, yes, Lord, I'll do that. How amazing was that? Jesus was obedient to God and he died for us. I died for our sins. I want to today share with you the story of Zacchaeus. Now, I'm going to take some liberty, some creative freedom in the story because I just want to tell you the story first and then I'm going to talk to you about the grace, the gift of grace and salvation. Okay, so let's start off. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Now, in those days, a tax collector was uh, not a very well-loved man. I don't even think in today's day, people that works for the uh, SARS is very well-known and very well-loved. But those days was much more difficult because what happened was the government said, you're going to pay me a lot of money, more than what I think you should, because as a government, they wanted to become rich. And the government employed tax collectors and said the tax collectors should go and get that money from the so obviously the tax collectors had to go from people to people, from home to home, from business to business, and get the money. And you know what happened? They sometimes took a little bit more than what they were supposed to. And nobody worried. Nobody cared. The government said, you can take as, many, as much money as you want as long as I get my fair share. And Zacchaeus was one of those people. He was actually a very senior tax collector. So the word of God says to us in Luke 19 that he was quite rich because obviously as he took the money for the Roman Empire, as he took the money for the government, he took a little bit of money and put it in his pocket. And that money is free. It's not his money, his wages or his salary that he got. That was free in his pocket. And he was quite a rich man. And people didn't like him. They actually despised tax collectors. There was, a, there was places in the Bible that even Jesus said, the tax collectors is not the most well-known and not the most well-respected people. But they didn't care. Zacchaeus didn't care. He actually said, I'm a tax collector and I get money and I'm important. Do you know one of the things that Zacchaeus also was? He was short. So unfortunately, he sometimes felt a bit left out. He sometimes felt a bit that people just walked over him because he was short. And I want to pick up the story the day before Jesus came to Jericho. And I want to just use some creative freedom here. And I want to tell you that that morning Zacchaeus sat with his colleagues and they were all sitting around a table and they said, well, right, what are we going to do today? How many tax are we going to collect? And to who are we going to go? And what is our plan of action for today? And one of his friends said to him, you know what, Zacchaeus, we need to be very careful because I've heard that the prophet Jesus is coming to town. 
We don't know when. It can be today. It can be tomorrow. It can be the day after. But the prophet Jesus is coming to town. And obviously, then all the people will follow him. It will almost be like in today's day when all of us go to a soccer match or all of us go to a cricket match and there's nobody at home and there's nobody in the streets because all of us went to that big occasion and there's nobody at home. So the tax collectors decided today we're going to work extra hard just for in case the prophet Jesus comes tomorrow. And so they decided they're going to go and Zacchaeus was excited and he started walking and he started knocking on doors and getting his money. And obviously as he get his money, he got a little bit extra for himself and then he got the money for the government. And that evening he was exhausted. He was exhausted. He sat at home and he said, oh, it was a hard day's work. And he thought about the prophet Jesus. And I believe the Holy Spirit, even at that stage, worked through Zacchaeus. Because I believe he wondered, who is Jesus? And what does he do? And why is everybody looking after him? And why is everybody following him? And why do they want to listen to him? And I believe the Holy Spirit stirred in Zacchaeus' heart about Jesus coming to Jericho. And the next morning, Jesus came in. And you know what Zacchaeus did? He said, "Uh uh-uh, I want to see who's Jesus. I want to see this prophet Jesus. I want to know what happens. And I believe the Holy Spirit worked in his heart that whole morning while he was trying to get through the the crowds. Because remember, he's short. He can't just look over everybody's head and see where's everybody. So he tried to get hold and all of a sudden he saw a tree and he saw the fig tree and he said, ah, I'm going to climb that sycamore tree. And he rushed over to the tree and he climbed up and he saw Jesus. And I believe at that point, the Holy Spirit changed Zacchaeus' heart. Because when Jesus looked up to him, Jesus said, I'm going to have dinner tonight at your place, Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus said, Thank you, Lord. And he climbed off and everybody was upset because he's a tax collector. He's a crook. He robs us of our money. Now Jesus wants to go and stay with him. Now that's not fair. But Jesus doesn't care about fair. He cares about people's hearts. And he saw Zacchaeus' heart and he realized that there's a miracle waiting to happen. There's grace that he can show Zacchaeus. There's a gift he wants to give Zacchaeus. And, you know, I want to pick up the story in Luke 19 where um, they, they actually, Jesus said that they are um, going to go to Zacchaeus' house. And in verse 7, the people started grumbling and they started muttering and they were upset. And they said, He's, he has gone to be the guest of a man who is a notorious sinner. That's what the people thought. Jesus can't stay with a notorious sinner. He can't stay with somebody that just sins and that just takes money and steals. And then Zacchaeus stopped and he said to the Lord, See, Lord, I'm now giving half of my possessions to the poor. And if I cheated anyone out of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this household because he too is a son of Abraham, for the son of man has come to seek and to save those which was lost. How amazing is that, children? How amazing is it that Zacchaeus realized his life is not according to what God wants it to be. He realized that there's a gift of salvation right in front of him with Jesus standing there that he can just accept. And he did it. And he confessed. He said, Lord, I'm not going to be a crook anymore. I'm not going to steal from people. If you find me stealing, I'm going to give back fourfold. I'm not going to steal anymore. I'm going to be an honorable tax collector. Kids, and today, I just want to share with you that that gift of salvation, even though Jesus is not walking around with us anymore, he gave us the Holy Spirit. And that gift of salvation today is a gift that he offers every one of us. And if you haven't accepted that gift yet, I would like to encourage you today to just sit and just accept the gift of salvation from Jesus. That is a gift that he gives us free of anything. We don't have to do anything. We can't do anything. Because he says to us, the wages of sin is death. That's a fact. doesn't matter how much I do, I can never do enough 
to pay for my sin. But Jesus did. And he paid for us. And he gives us that gift. He gives us the gift of salvation today still. We just have to accept it. And I want to today pray with all of you. Even if you've given your heart to Jesus, even if you've accepted this gift, this gift of salvation that God talks to us in Zacchaeus' story, even if you've done so, let's do it again. We can never be too sure. We can never be doing it enough times because every time when I do it, I get encouraged by the fact that Jesus is my Savior. He came to earth to, be, to pay for my sin, for every sin that I've done, that I'm doing today, that I'm going to do next year, tomorrow. And for my, for my gratefulness to him, I will do good works. I'm not doing good works to pay for my sin. I'm doing good works because Jesus paid for my sins and I'm in a relationship with him. So let us pray together and let's just pray for this gift of salvation that God shows us every day. Lord Jesus, thank you very much for the opportunity today to just share the words that you've worked through Zacchaeus to us, that you gave to us while you were in Jericho that day. While you looked at Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector, who was very sinful, he was stealing stuff. But God, you looked at him and you saw an opportunity to give to him the gift of salvation. And he accepted it. And Lord, today, I just want to pray with a lot of children out there and for myself again to say, God, we want to accept your gift of salvation today. I want to accept your gift of salvation. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to earth, that you died on the cross for my sins. Thank you that I know that I can't do anything except to accept the gifts of salvation. And help me from today forward to live in grace, to live in relationship with you so that this gift can grow, so that we can bear fruit, and so that we can tell other people about this gift. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I really just want to encourage you, if it was your first time that you've given your life to Jesus, that you've accepted this gift of salvation, I just want to encourage you to say, please go and read John, the, the book John. It's a book of love where God shows us his love for his people. And I want to encourage you to read it because that's the book where I believe he's trying to tell us how we must live in love after we've given our life to him. And I'm looking forward to next week. Next week, we're going to talk about God's grace and the gift of healing. And I hope you have a great week and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Let's sing along. <laughs>